Well, I've just drawn this picture out again, and we're going to start off with a just a splash of colour for the sky. I'm going to wet all of this part here right down to the houses. There we go. And um, as I said in the last video, we don't do much fussing about the um, about the sky because that's not the uh, the sky isn't the main feature. So all we do is we'll I have a little bit of purple here. Put on my um, my colours across the screen, probably at the top actually, yeah, at the top of the screen, and we're on a mixture of purple and of the blue there, French ultramarine blue. Let's just put a little bit in. See, it doesn't really matter how detailed you put in there. Let's add a bit of um, opera red, opera rose. Put that there. And we'll put a little bit around there. How's that? Hey, that was dead simple. Right, I'm just going to give that a little shaky, shaky bout. And that's what actually does the does the painting of the of the sky. We'll give it a good shaking, bashing down. That's it. Nothing too technical, really. Go right now then. Let's have a I'll just keep that in place there. Got a couple of white marks here, and do you know what I'm gonna do? I think we'll just try something. We'll try and put some some uh, white streaks in there so the sun's shining down. So I'm gonna tip this up this way and let, let the some cool, some clean water in there. Let's give it a shot, eh? And that way, I'm just gonna let the picture paint itself. Here we go. We've got a nice streak coming through there. There we go. I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gonna lift up a bit of the excess. water just to help those streaks be a little bit more prominent we'll just get a bit of a handkerchief just roll it into a oh that's broken that's not good roll it into a little roll like that and just create a few little streaks there A shake or some of that water through there. And just add a bit more water to the edges here because I don't want it to look too unnatural, really. The streaks are much better when God does it for me. I don't know what's happening, it just happens. I prefer those streaks. But I'm afraid it's me, I've created this, so it's never going to be as good. There we go. Let's move that up there and let that, let that just develop its, its little self on its own. Right, I think what we shall do now is let that dry, that's it there, leave that alone and I well, didn't say did I, my first brush that I used, it was like a mock brush, it's a new brush that I've just bought and it's uh, from uh, Da Vinci, that's the Da Vinci and it's a uh, Petit Gris Pur. little grey something, I don't know what that means, anyway um, yeah, it's number five, Da Vinci, it's a mop that it's called Petit Gris P-U-R, Pur. Right, I'm sure someone will tell me what that actually means, 
me being so flipping ignorant and all that lot. But I think what we'll do now is I'm going to add a couple of um, just a couple of background trees, and we use a bit of Haynes Gray mixed with that sky colour. And all I'm going to do is just because the painting's at an angle, I'm at about 25 degrees. Just going to drop a few. Bits of colour here. <clears throat> and just have a quick paper. So, just drop a few little drops of very, very loose. Wait, uh, paint here. There we go. I'm going to fetch this down here. I fetch this down just to the back of these trees, of these uh, houses. Uh, fetch that out there. I'm going to come down with a few bold marks there. Now then, this is well in here, it's welling up, so I'm going to get myself a thirsty brush just by sque just squeezing it out and letting it drink that up. Just drying that up, just soaking that up with my thirsty brush. There we go. Let's leave that to dry for a bit. Okay, so now that's dried, there's an helicopter going over my head. Well that's dried, I'm now going to paint this church in the background somewhere because I know it's dried I can start from the top. Come down a little bit, ever so gently with that same wash that I used on the sky and these trees. So I've added a little bit of bit of paint spray with that when I did these trees. And just using that damp wash just to come down here a little bit. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna create a line there so it, it it tells the subconscious eye that this line is gonna carry on down there, but there won't be a line there, it's all gonna be fading away. So I'm gonna put some clean water in there. Bit of clean water there, and we'll just drain that out and lighten that up there. You know, and although there's nothing there, the eye thinks that there's something going on down there. So I just make a, a continuation of that old church there. We'll do the same here, we'll just add a little bit of a little bit of water there. And now I'm going to just even all that up. We don't want any harsh white areas there. What we can do now is just lift that out with a handkerchief. And that's up to dried from the previous wash so I'm just going to destroy that edge and do that okay 
So on the next I'm going to work on these trees here. Just going to drag the top of the trees over there. little branches down there from this area of leafy area there the bushiness of the tree and bring she's down from there. I like to try where where these branches join the, the main trunk of the tree. I like to add a little bit of a, a knobble there and it just tells the viewer something's going on there. That's for them to make their mind up what's happening. It might be a nest in that tree, or it just might be the tree is a little bit knobbly at that part. There we go. Right, and I think what we should do is just to lift a little bit out here. Pop that there. Just push down and fade that away. There you go. Just lift a little bit out there with a thirsty brush. I don't want these tree trunks to be quite as stark. There we go. Let's move on to one of the other trees. So, just a little, little side of wash. It's like a big sausage, isn't it, going that way? Great big sausage going over there. A little bit extra there. So we we'll just bring this down here. And these um, little branches are going to be like at the distance because we'll be putting more branches in here in a bit. We're making those new branches we're going to put in uh, darker. So a little show that these branches now will be a little bit more further receded so and we'll just lift a little bit from there just from the base of that tree Just lifting some of that water off there. Right. I think the next stage is to let this dry completely. So we'll do that. Well, this next part, I think we'll we'll add a few of these uh, branches in a little stronger, just a little stronger. So I'm still using the same colour, this blue, and a bit of the purple which was a sky colour and a little bit of opera rose now a little bit of Payne's grey and I'm going to add a bit of put a bit of water in there don't want it to be too strong this let's try let's try one out first right so I start off with my brush really just gently, only just gently touching the paper at that point. See there? I only just gently. And as I move down, I press a little bit more down there. And that gives that tree trunk a bigger, bigger surface area. So, we'll do that there. There we go. 
because the trunk should always be wider at the bottom than they are at the top. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. That's easy peasy. Oh, that looks quite nice. And when that dries, that should be uh, it should blend in quite well. I'm going to just add a little bit more colour now to the top. Just a tad on the top areas. And then with a the damp brush, just lift a little bit of it off there. And hopefully those branches should just blend in nicely now. I'll just blend them in. And that bit up there. And we'll do that. The same thing here. A little bit more broken. And we'll pull a few more branches down from that. Get that little dab there. And this one will just go straight for straight for the branches. And they don't all have to connect to, to the same trunk. Shows them that there's quite a few. Um, trees together here. I'm just going to blend this out a little bit. Add a little bit more water there on colour. There we are. Just to make it a little bit more authentic. I'm going to dab some of that colour there. Don't want it too dark this. But our depth of colour on these are going to push that back. Okay, so I think now let's start thinking about putting this. Oh, we'll do that one there. That be our first house. I'm going to make a colour up for this. Let's have some yellow in there first with a little bit of opera rose just a tad and let's see how this works so bring it down there and I don't go in a straight line I like to just move the direction of the brush around and about and then a bit more opera rose as we get further down so it's not one or so it's not one uniform shape of colour these are different areas and you get a little different speckles in there when you do that and I think it's nice it's like the uh, the light is casting some little speckles some sun speckles on your um, and your building let's go further down let's add a little bit more purple to this and a bit more upper rows so as we move down here we're going to cut into certain areas we're giving this little bush here some shape so we know that we don't want a complete circle we don't want an oval bush it's not been trimmed very well we want it to have lots of sticky out bits and um, have a bit more yellow in this now just to brighten it up here 
just to add a little bit more light over this area and now you can see all these different colors blending together this yellow purple opera rose and all the mixtures of them all happening together let's add a little bit more opera rose very nice very strong color here um, I'm going to have a little green bush here so I'm just making a negative painting around that area and a little purple in there purple and a little bit of ultramarine blue there just to the top part here that's the darkest area and we're painting into wet down there and we'll start thinking about this chimney pot I'll only put a little bit on the top here because I want this yellow to meet it on its way up. There you go. And let gravity blend that down. Just draw a little bit out of it and I'll draw some of this out of here. Make it a little drier and a little bit more yellow in there. It's like the most previous colour, you know, the, the, the latest colour that you put in seems to be more dominant and it pushes the colour underneath around. Like this one here, because it's quite strong here, but if I put some yellow in there that will start pushing this out of the way and I quite like that I think it's lovely now well, let's let that dry shall we so um, I think we should move on to the next one now right now then there we go Right, I think it's a little bit more purplier, this colour. Is that word purplier? I don't know. It is now. The Marl Thesaurus. A bit purple looking. Right, uh, we'll add a bit of this beautiful upper rose to the, to the mixture. And I think we'll put a little bit of blue in this now. Blue with opera rose. It makes its own kind of purple, this. Very, very nice. It's a much cooler purple, almost like violet, really. So you just use the tip of the brush when you can tip of the brush and when you come down to bigger strokes just push it down a little bit more now it's getting too purpley for me so I'm going to add a bit of more of this old opera rose coming down to the bottom now we're going to make some little um, divots here into this tree to show that this is quite a 
this tree's got lots of wild branches and leaves. I think it's quite nice. That. I like the way that upper rose begins there and it just comes down there. A bit more upper rose now, I think. Just to go over the top there. Okay. I think that was quite nice there. Eh? Now I'm going to a bit more upper rows for the back part. So this is the back part of the eave of this beautiful thatched cottage. Right. Uh, we'll come up here, we'll get a bit of the darker colour, the, the mixture there with the ultramarine. I think we'll use a little bit of Penn's grey up here. Just let it just touch the top of that chimney stack. That'll work its way down there. No. Should I go back to that yet yeah, or just I think I'll wait until we've done this one. So I'm now making a mixture of um, like a, an orangey colour. Down there, nice straight line. Let's add just a little bit neat of a little bit of neat orange there, um, neat yellow. So I made a mixture of cadmium red and um, yellow there, but now it's just a little bit of just straightforward old or uh, of yellow. Let that come down. Let add a bit of red to this as we come down because it's nice to get the colour to change a little bit as you come down. It just makes it seem a little bit more interesting. And a bit of that red now, just to, I mean, a bit of yellow to pull down into. Makes like an orange colour. There we go, look at that. That's quite pretty. I like that. Just lifting some of this red over and dropping it around there. There you go. Right now let's get a bit of this blue, this purpley colour, just to the top of this chimney stack and on the chimney pots themselves. I'll just put a bit of water there just to pull that down. Let it do the work for us, eh? So that's all perfectly dried now and I think let's have got these little trees and bushes. So on this one we want to use initially gold green for this one. So we're just going to put a straight old colour of gold green here. Let's establish the, where the the light is coming from though, it's coming from this angle, yeah? Even though we've got a little bit of light there, it's not worked that well so we can forget about that, but the light's coming from this angle. And just add in that's a bit little bits of colour as we come down as we get further down we can make it a little bit darker but we just want to pop in a bit of colour into these little areas here try not to leave a great big white line all the way around it just looks it looks unfinished so 
and a lot of people do it and that's yeah that's fine it's not too bad if you're doing it on the side of where the light is but when you do it on the darker side you don't really want that happening there I'll put a bit of green there as well now I'm going to put a little bit of sap green just at the bottom here so I'm just using the the brush like just doing crisscross shapes really and it just brings the, the, the colouring from different angles back with a bit of gold back with a bit of gold I'm going to leave this quite light here because what I express a quite a light area here to say it's quite a sunny day so I'm going to put quite light um, areas of 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 where the light is hitting and complement that by putting really deep shadows sharp shadows as well so now I've just got a little bit of uh, just a damp brush and I'm pulling out just pulling out that paint from over here you just pull it out there you go so just get your put your brush in there and pull out there that's quite a damp brush it's not too wet it's just damp so we'll make it a thirsty brush now so I'll just lift out these great big beads of colour just along here there we go I think that's what it looks nice it looks like this the sun is shining on that area when this dries we'll put another layer over here now this part here that's got some beautiful beautiful um, colour here of opera rose straight old opera rose in fact let's add a little bit of cadmium red to it just to push that out a little bit don't know what kind of tree this is but it's got lots of red leaves in it but we can make this work however we like so just add a little bit of purple down the bottom here and back to me red here and I think we'll go quite neat opera rose here yeah just a little stray bushes and leaves here and I'll go back to this red here at the bottom sometimes when you're colouring things in you don't need to with if you if you're painting from a scene you really don't need to stick with exactly the colour that you've got in front of you you can just complement it look at colours to complement things with so I'm going to complement this area with this uh, a bit of this Viridian green here it's just quite bright that so I'm just using the tip of the brush there we go bring this in and then I'm going to lift a few little areas out with a thirsty brush and we're just going to connect these two now and let that flow in now before it goes to a bit too crazy lift some of it out on the right hand side and I just think it wanted that there you go just pull that over and then you don't see the two the two bushes as being separate elements they kind of run into each other 
which is nice. Because you don't want a tree here, a tree here, a bush there, a bush there. It's nice when the, the whole area kind of blends itself in and connects itself. Uh, at the bottom there, we're going to put some see some little bits of grass. Well, we're not here. I'm just using this straightforward mixture that we've got in our palette here. It's a mixture of um, uh, different greens, and that's fine. Now this part here, let's see if it's, I think it's quite damp still, so it's going to give us a soft area around here. But it's starting to dry up a little bit over there, so that's okay. And now what we can do is, just with this mixture, it's a bit of a mixture of different kind of colours, just add some little shapes over here. These shapes are little form shadows, yeah, and that just shows us the shape of this tree. That's just for the shape of it. Because it's not too, they're not too dark. And in a bit, I think we once it's we've done this bit and this is dried, then we can put some shadow um, shadows in. Yeah, as opposed to shape, uh, as opposed to yeah, form shadows. Got the first lot, and they just give it a bit of shape. Now, I think we'll put the other side of that eave over here. side of this building here we're going to make a loose mixture so we're using this Payne's grey sky kind of colour but I've just added some water here to make it very light and that is just light enough that to do what we want to do now then this bush is towards the light so I'm going to leave a little bit of white area just come around the edge there and leave the tiniest bit there we go All right, and we'll drop a shadow under here drop a wee shadow there and we'll drop some shadow here where I'm just picking up a darker a richer color there and this is where this idea of painting almost like drawing with the end edge of your brush up like that here and just draw little squiggles and that kind of does that trick it shows that's bits of light shining through that and we'll do the same now with this side of the building and we're going to leave it quite a light here and all the way over here I've just caught a little bit of that colour there but I'm not worried about that and what I could do if I was too worried I'd just give me a brush a little make it Thursday and just pull that down there see that not the end of the world if you do a little mistake like that but I'm not that bothered about it so you know what I'm going to do, this shadow is a lovely colour shadow but I'm going to change the colour up as it's coming down a little bit. Add a little bit of these warmer colours, different mixtures here. Just 
from opera rolls and go back into this this little cover here and that's gone a bit wild that into that tree so I'm going to lift some of that out there we go because it's making that tree look thinner at the bottom just don't want to do that and here I think I'll put some little break that line up a little bit because I'm going to put some greenery in there soon and at the bottom we'll just shape this edge here let's get a bit of warmer colour as well for the for those top bits Now this tree here to the left, we could keep that green thing to balance that out and we can make it a different colour but I think for the sake of this I'm going to make it a brighter green. I'm going to add this viridian for this, this demonstration, so I'm using viridian green and just when you've got this lovely bushy tree, you just, just go and run, run about like that. It's like doing little circles or semicircles or upside down U shapes and just go around. A lot of people do that with a rush. But I don't think you've got as much control when you do it that way. There's nothing wrong in doing it. Nothing wrong in doing that at all. But it's just not the way I do it, that's all. I try and use the tip of my brush as much as I can. And now I'm going to go in with a sap green around there. A quite soft edge all the way around. And then I don't like that great big white line so but if I go too close this bead will just run away with me so I'm just going to lift some of this out so it's not as thirsty so it's not as wet and now I'm just going to go up to the edge with the tip of my brush I think that'll do the trick now, with that darker colour, there we are, and I'm going to put some darker colour here, just on this area here. All right. Okay, so we are now going to start working some shadows, some form shadows first. And we separate those form shadows from deep, light, dark shadows. First of all, we need to put a little bit of, well, I did a bit of green with that, a little bit of colour in that church in the back. No, we don't need anything there, actually. No. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a little tree here. I just think it might just warrant a little extra tree there. Actually, two trees, isn't it? But right, that's okay. That's all right. We'll take a little dab off there. And some of those there. Bosh, bosh. 
Now I'm going to put some shadows in these areas. I'll make a nice shadow colour. So it's a mixture of French ultramarine and Opera Rose. It's a lovely shadow colour this. And a little bit of Payne's Grey. Just a little bit. Not too much. Let's get that lovely warmth there again. So we're going to practice on this purple one here. In fact, I've got too much water on there. So I just drained a bit of it off. Right. Now let's start telling the story now with the shadows and with form. Okay, so that's down there. just at the bottom here and we'll make that into a little a sticky out bit there and let's fetch some shadows over here that this tree is casting to this one, do the same. You can use shadows on this picture a little bit more sharper. It just means it, if the sharper the shadows, the sunnier the day is. Yeah, if you've got soft shadows, it's usually a sign that the day is quite a... It's casting a soft light upon the situation. Now, I just wanted to add a bit more pigment on that side. Just so we know that this is the edge. This is that part. And just at the bottom and around there all right i think we'll do the same on this side now let's put a little TV aerial. And put a bit of shadow here. Still just using the tip of the brush. If you've got a brush like this, a Skoda, Pearler, synthetic ones, you get a great point of reach um, great sharpness and it helps you to basically draw with the brush which is what we're doing here really I want to create some some shadows within these brushes here I'll get some chimp, some windows in these buildings now. I used to have two stages for my windows. This is stage one. Can't do that in there because it's a lot bit wet. And I'll do this one.
And while that's drying, I'll tell you what, I'll lift a little bit of this bead out there. I think what we'll do is I'll um, I'll get the get the grass in the foreground in here just now. And I'm gonna use my little little Terry Harrison fan brush. So just grab a bit of colour on this. It's a bit too light that so I'm gonna add a bit more colour to it. Mixture of the gold green and the sap green and just tap up the edges. That's better. And blend it up to the to the base. It doesn't matter if it runs up or runs down. It really doesn't matter. If you've got a bit of shadow colour in there, it really doesn't matter. This part here could prove tricky, but I managed to get away with that. Right, let's just. With our brush, just tap, 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 baby finger on the paper. Just how God made it for not a baby finger going up the nose, but on the paper there. Helps us to control the amount of pressure this, this your brush has. And it hits the paper. Warmth in this now. Let's add a bit of red to this, Looks like brownie colour, and a bit of yellow, and just tap the edges. And let's just see what happens. Just a little bit there. It just changes up the tone of that colour as, as we go along. Let's have just a bit of yellowy colour here. Yeah. Okay, that brown. I think we should go back to the green now. a mixture of Viridian Green and this yellow. And I'm allowing this brown to blush into this green. Like that dry for a minute. So the next thing we need to do is just to finish up by putting a few extra shadows in. Let's cut, put a couple of uh, these windows in. This one here because it's dry now. So I'll just put a on there. On there. Top, this is my second stage for the window. Put a little bit darker at the top. Over there. Right now, this seems a little bit lack of tone, so now is where I'm going to put 
put shadow in there we're using Payne's grey a bit of the ultramarine blue and rose opera just to go inside these little area just to Blend those little shapes together. Okay. Anything else we need to do on this? Let's right, just put a little. Let's put a little fence here. I think in this one. But all my fences are also a bit wonky. And if you notice with that, I smudged it. So it's not the end of the world. We just get a little bit more of the green. And what the eye doesn't see, just balance it over there. The heart doesn't grieve over, does it? That needs a bit of colour as well, doesn't it? So, just a bit of extra shadow. Little dappy bits. Like that. Just have a few little shadows there. And I think I'll put a little window. Window in there. And I think we can probably call that finished. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this second time round. Um, hopefully you've, you've seen more detail in this. Um, and uh, you can build these skills into your armour when you go out painting your own pictures so thank you very much indeed for watching again i really do appreciate it and um, please have a look at my website which is uh, www.somersetartist.com uh, thanks again goodbye